Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. We're a member of the industry syndicate. You are listening to the right podcast if you're a broker owner or you're a team leader or you're an individual agent and you're looking to increase your average sale price and work smarter, not harder by attracting more high-end and luxury clients. Again, we do focus on listings here. The name of the podcast is Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast, just like our book, just like the Luxury Listing Specialist designation. However, we love working with high net worth buyers as well. You know, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions or you have a suggestion as far as a guest, please shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. But uh, as I mentioned to you before, we're always looking for guests that could fill a void, maybe a topic we haven't covered, maybe a trendy topic, maybe something that uh, you, you as an agent haven't even thought about, but you want to be prepared and differentiate yourself if you come across that scenario. And today's guest is somebody that I stumbled upon in a real-life scenario. As many of you might know, I practice what I preach. I'm not just the founder of the Luxury Listing Specialist or Lux designation and uh, not just the author of the book Luxury Listing Specialist, but I practice what I preach. I run a small team here in the Chicagoland market with an independent brokerage, and we represent some amazing properties. I'm selling the Architectural Digest, most beautiful home for sale in Illinois. It was on the TV show Empire. But I'm also selling a winery that's about two and a half hours outside of Chicago. It's called Rocky Waters Winery. It's on the market for called $6 million. And we got a call from somebody that wanted to see if my seller would consider cryptocurrency uh, as far as it, uh, to purchase the property with. And this was my first uh, t- possible transaction with crypto. And of course, maybe you see it on Inman News or various things that you belong to. But when, it, when you're in the trenches and you have an inquiry that is seriously interested, that's when sometimes you say, oh man, I got I to gotta make sure I get all my ducks in a row. Because in my case, I have an 82-year-old seller client that isn't familiar with crypto and the internet and gets his web his email address confused with text messages so i had to get all my ducks in a row and put everything on a silver platter so that when i went back to him i made sure i had the the knowledge and i had the answers to questions that he possibly would ask and that's how i stumbled upon today's guest so i put out a, a post saying hey does anybody have a uh, an agent that has worked with crypto or an attorney, because in Illinois, we're an attorney-based state. In other words, we uh, deal with title companies, but we are attorney-based state where on a transaction, the seller is dealing with an attorney, and the attorney communicates primarily with the title company to pull the survey and the title, et cetera. And so today's guest became highly recommended from an, a fellow agent, and I gave him a call, and A, it was accessible, but B, I learned more uh, from Don in, in five minutes than I learned from others talking about cryptocurrency. And so I said, Don, i got to have you on our podcast. So that might be maybe my longest intro ever, Don, for the podcast, but I had to kind of set the table, so to speak, as to why you're on today and why I was so impressed. And so, uh, Don, you there? Yeah, I'm here. So, Don, Don, how do you pronounce your – is it Kiyabasa? Yeah, so Donald Kian Kiyabasa. So, Donald Kiyabasa here is an attorney and CPA here in the Chicagoland market. And, Don, if you wouldn't mind sharing with some of the folks uh, your – uh, background with cryptocurrency. You shared with me, you did a, a seminar, an educational type session uh, for McDonald's or McDonald's University recently. And so yeah. you get asked 
a lot of different questions, not just real estate, but crypto in general. So tell us a little bit about your background and how um, you started to stumble upon the cryptocurrency. And if you start there and then we'll go into some questions. Cool. So uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for your time. My name is Don Kilbasa. Uh, so I'm a lawyer and CPA. Uh, so how I, how I got into technology, it, it was kind of a natural progression. Um, we, we're a really high volume law firm. Like I, we probably do on a soft year, 600 closings a year. Uh, I'm a board member of the Illinois Real Estate Lawyer Association and I'm vice chair of Chicago Bar Association Real Property Division. And, um, so uh, two things happened that got me into, uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency. So the first thing that happened was, uh, before I was practicing law, I was at KPMG uh, my wife is my law partner, but before she practiced law, she was at Accenture, and we were both kind of like tech people. Okay. So once our firm, once our firm started rolling, uh, we are heavily invested in the technology startup community here in Chicago. Uh, we have a small fund that invests in technology, and we act as uh, board members, directors, advisory panelists, all kinds of stuff. So that's what started us in um in technology. Then uh, recently, uh, we gave a talk at together at Hamburger University for uh, the Illinois Real Estate Lawyer Association because they had a lot of questions about international transactions. So let me start for the purpose of cryptocurrency and the underlying technology. Do, do you have questions or do you want me to get right into it? No, get, 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 get right into it, please. Okay, so for example, China in um so uh for the sake of the audience and for the sake of the gig, the example can can i pretend you and i we just met you're yes, a, a, you're a listing Perfect. agent so hey it's a pleasure to meet you i hear you you list property is that accurate yes uh market properties here in the chicagoland area illinois technically hey i heard the market in certain areas you know, it, we're not going to hit a recession, but have things gotten a little soft? It definitely has slowed down in that upper market. That's a fair statement. Oh, really? Can you tell me, like, more or less what date did that happen? What date? Well, in the Chicago... Chicago yeah, or, or date, the... date range. Give, give me a date range where you think that started to happen, where things started softening up. Yeah, so Chicagoland home prices peaked in September of 2006. So... Uh, that was the peak, and uh, so things have been kind of going down since then. Okay, so but there was a there was this crash in two thousand eight, and then there was a recovery that started in two thousand twelve, right? That is that is exactly right. After two thousand twelve's recovery happened, what year, more or less, did things start really softening up until the present? That's a great question. Um, Can I give you a little bit of background? Yeah, please. So did you know in December 31st, 2016, the Chinese government passed a statute making, prohibiting outgoing wires in excess of $50,000? Yeah, I, I was aware how the Canadian market was affected much of that um, in many areas, so, as well as areas of the Amer se Americas. Several countries wanted to control the outgoing of currency, right? So they put in these rules, right? Well if you put rules on the control of currency, would there be room for a disruptive technology to come in that can circumvent those rules? Sure, like absolutely. cryptocurrency, right? Because like yeah. if you have all your money in, in Chinese RMB, but you find out you can put it in Bitcoin, right? And, not, and be able to make those transfers without the scrutiny of you know, being subject to these wires, it's, that's a good thing, isn't it? That's a great thing. So all of a sudden, all these regulations started popping up, and which caused an appetite to circumvent those rules, which created cryptocurrency. Do you know how it kind of all of a sudden bubbled and popped out of nowhere? Mm -hmm. You know, Bitcoin mm -hmm. was trading for pennies, and all of a sudden it's $10,000? Because a lot of people thought it was a great solution to a problem of governmental controlled monetary policies. So anyway, that's what, so cryptocurrency is digital currency. Like you can either get it by buying it or mining it, right? I'm not going to get into the details of mining because it gets kind of, you know, complicated, 
But think about it like this. Imagine different credit cards. Do you know how you have a Visa, Master, MasterCard, uh, American Express? You have all these different credit cards. Yes. It's the same principle with cryptocurrency. Like you have all these platforms that offer these tokens, which are essentially like um, having a different credit card, essentially. Okay. So one of the things that has everybody, um, you know, running around, it's a new buzzword. It's called blockchain. Have you ever heard of the word blockchain? I have, yes. So blockchain is the underlying technology of cryptocurrency. When cryptocurrency was created, it was created based off of this thing called blockchain. Now, the technical definition of blockchain, it's like a decentralized uh, debit and credit system. For all of us real estate people, I want you to think about a settlement statement, a HUD. Do you know how if there's a debit on one side, there needs to be a credit on the other? Yes. That's all blockchain is. It's a debit and credit system to ensure the validity of a transaction. It basically allows you to track stuff. That's all it is. Make sense? Okay. That does make so sense. Crypto, yeah. So cryptocurrency, there are two different things. Cryptocurrency is... It's, it's a monetary, it's a medium of exchange, monetary. It's just like having an American Express versus MasterCard, right? And then, you know, you pick which one you like better, right? Now, the fluctuations in value that's happening is a lot of speculation. So when you hear Bitcoin $10,000, is it worth that? Who knows? It might be worth, uh, it might become worth $100,000 or it might become worth zero. It's the same principle as like the value of these credit cards, right? So... The cryptocurrency is the exchange, and blockchain is the underlying technology. It helps things from becoming hacked or corrupted. And it, it, it's virtually impossible to hack or corrupt the blockchain system when done properly because it's a decentralized, it's not connected to anything. And to hack into a blockchain system is extraordinarily complicated because you'd have to hack into all these different things. So that's what cryptocurrency is, and that's what blockchain is, right? Now let's go to real estate, right? So real estate is essentially what normally happens is two parties come to a, a title company and, you know, they exchange money for property, right? So cryptocurrency is the exact same thing, right? They're exchanging this money in the form of, like, let's pretend we're using um, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, they're exchanging they're exchanging that Bitcoin for the property. Now, the problem is it's very scary because you need title companies who are able to accept and exchange the, the cryptocurrency like it was cash. Makes sense? It's, it's essential. Think about a title company trying to accept a Visa card for, <laughs> for cash. Right. right. It's kind of the same principle. Not all title companies are willing to do that risk because just, they just don't know about it. However, what I think we're going to see in the future in real estate is a lot more people are starting to just use digital currency because just cash and checks are mostly inefficient. Think about it. When you go to Starbucks and you buy a cup of coffee with your card, that's using digital currency. Yeah. But they, they want to scale it really high to where you're going to be doing real estate. And the, one of the reasons why they want to do it in real estate is – they want to um, be, you know how I said the debit and credit system, like a way to track it? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fraud that happens in real estate. And in theory, if you did it on the blockchain, it would be extremely difficult for the fraud to be perpetrated. Now, that's the good stuff. That's the great, amazing theory stuff. Um, when you and I talked, I said, hey, man, something doesn't feel right, right? So here, let's talk about some of the bad things about cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency is based off of something called like tokens. Tokens is like, do you remember going to like a video game arcade? Yes, when you were absolutely. Younger? Yes. Remember you put a $5 bill and you get all these tokens? Yes. It's the same thing. And those tokens are very valuable when you're in that arcade, right? get to use them mm -hmm. on games. 
But when you leave that arcade, what are those tokens really worth? Nothing, right? So the scary thing about accepting tokens is you need to make sure that you're working with a token that is transferable into greenbacks, right? If some guy or gal out of their basement just created some tokens, we don't know if that's actually substantiated with value. So uh-huh. that's, the, that's one of the things you need to be fearful of. If someone says, if I were you, in, if I were in your shoes as a real estate agent, I would say, look, if you got cryptocurrency, exchange it, right? Fine, fine, we'll do a cryptocurrency transaction. 30 seconds before you do your wire, go on your Coinbase platform, go to your wallet and trade the, now don't do it 30 seconds before because you know you, there, there's like time for wires and all that stuff. Two days uh-huh. before, change your Bitcoin into, into cash, into you know, US dollars and do the exchange. Because right now, there's just not enough safeguards. There, the infrastructure isn't prepared to do direct exchanges with you know, cryptocurrency. So right now, ask them to do, you know, to trade right beforehand, right? Because the title companies are just not ready. If you remember, one of the things that made me suspicious about your situation is they said those tokens weren't ready to be traded, right? And it made me a little nervous because I was like, hmm, that means your platform's not up. That means your tokens are probably worthless. Uh Do you remember all that? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, in my scenario, you know, they were interested in the winery, but they didn't want to convert their their tokens to greenbacks immediately, but basically it was almost like a uh, 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 IPO, ICO, right? An initial in IPO. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. IPO is a good way. Well, who knows if that thing's actually worth anything. So that's the right. that's the principle. So um, that's basically what it is. I, I do think we're headed in that direction as far as like, I, I think cash is going to become less and less used. You know, you're seeing in the news people using, you know, digital currency all the time now. But I, ju- I don't think we're not there right now, but it's not far away. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. So in our scenario, um, I have an elderly client and he he just wants cash, right? Or, or, or mortgage yep. perhaps, but, but he doesn't want to take on somebody's currency, cryptocurrency. And so you suggested, well, then tell the potential buyer to have them, have it converted, if you will, exchange it into cash, uh, U.S. dollars. And the fact that they said, well, we can't now because it's, it's not available now. So it's basically like a, a, you know, an IPO. It's not official yet. So we're, you know, there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of um, you mentioned to me there's there's a lot of bad money in the crypto world right now, drug money or you know people are wanting to perhaps stay um, you know they're they're trying to purchase properties, get money into countries um, in a way that they're anonymous they're doing it in ways and there's some very uh, good people out there that have the cash and they're doing it this way because of you know the the tax cap, or you aren't able to wire out X amount above fifty thousand in, in China, for example. But didn't you also mention to me there's there's a lot of uh, fraudulent money out there as well with crypto? Yeah, there there's fraudulent money out there. Like I don't want like don't this isn't like the Silk Road uh, analogy. Like this is very like part of my portfolio is cryptocurrency. I just. You know, it, it represents about seven to ten percent of my portfolio at any given time, cryptocurrency. And I'm aggressive, but I don't think um, us in real estate have matured to the place that we're ready to accept that. I do believe that's where we're going because there's a lot of good people and there's a lot of money out there, right? But what I'm telling everybody to take caution in is most people who work in crypto understands that we're in our infancy stages, right? They understand that. They get it. And they get that, hey, if you if we're wiring to a small town title company that doesn't have the infrastructure to do it, it's very easy for us to transfer that crypto into cash, right? 
So if people don't get it and you want the land, just transfer it to cash and be done with it and do the purchase. However, um, you know, there are a, a, some bad apples out there. So you just got to, you know, take caution because we, we don't have the infrastructure or capacity to really regulate it yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good point. So it's, yeah, so, have, it's it's not it's not regulated. So, what if, is there a resource, a website? You know, if I'm an agent in Seattle, I'm an agent in Cleveland, Ohio. Fill in the blank. Doesn't matter where. Um, yeah. And I want to educate myself further, or I perhaps want to differentiate my listing further and say the seller would consider cryptocurrency, you know, where can both the owner and, and the, the agents listening find out more information on crypto? So if it were me, right, and obviously uh, I have, there are other people in the industry who don't agree with me, right? But I'm sure. telling you my opinion, right? If it were me, I wouldn't accept crypto yet. Right. Okay. And there's a couple of guys and I know them. If they heard me say that, they would go bananas on me. Right. <laughs> and the reason why is those guys are um, are. Uh, how do you say those guys are very they're in the education space to a certain extent. Right. Those guys are innovators. They're pioneers and they're brilliant. The thing is. I'm a simple lawyer who I've seen a lot of fraud <laughs> in 14 years, right? Yep. And so you're skeptical it, it by was, nature. I mean, your your default yeah. radio station is, hey, you, you, your BS meter goes up on most things until proven yeah. otherwise. Yeah. If it were me and I were you guys and gals out there, I would not be in a place where I feel comfortable yet accepting cryptocurrency for real estate. That's the way mm-hmm. I feel. Mm-hmm. Right. And, Mm -hmm. you know, to those, you know, to those couple of, you know, those brilliant minds out there who disagree with me and I understand where they're coming from. And I hope they don't criticize me too much because I hope they understand where I'm coming from. I've seen a lot of fraud. And until those until there's certain regulation in place, I probably wouldn't accept cryptocurrency. If someone says they have cryptocurrency, tell them to transfer it to go on their wallet, call the wallet, digital wallet on their wallet, trade that cryptocurrency for cash, because that's the only way that we know that there's actual value in those tokens, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, if you're faced with no choice, um, you know, just make sure you're working with a reputable um, digital currency that you can come up with like a very good, you know, idea of what the value is and you feel comfortable with the chance that that value might fluctuate. Right. I would, but I would generally, as of right now, only accept cash. Yep. Good point. And that's basically what we uh, relayed to my, you know, my client, you know, and he felt most comfortable with cash. Uh, again, 82 year old seller of the winery. And we let the potential buyer know as well, hey, we'd love to work with you. However, due to, you know, some, a little bit of older client, he'd feel more comfortable with more traditional greenbacks is the term that you shared with me on our call. And yep. those in the crypto world uh, understand that's converting the crypto to currency, correct? Yep. It'll take them 20 seconds, 30 seconds to do it. I did, I did it yesterday, right? So okay. it happens really fast. But it's just one of those things that um, – uh, I do believe that is our future. I do believe that within my lifetime, uh, the, we, you know, we will be sending digital currency to the title company. Cause I do believe it's long-term safer and secure. You're seeing like banks, like just pour money into digital currency. It's almost weird using cash going to, you know, to Starbucks, right? Like yeah. there's not a lot of industries that we consistently use no. cash anymore, but yeah, I actually. But uh, so I, I, I did a webinar last week, and uh, as a thank you, they sent me um, an email with a barcode because I don't have a Starbucks, you know, account, so to speak, right? And uh, yep. And so literally, you take that in, and they scan it, and and it's it's same as money. Yep. And I I think in you know for for real estate agents out there, it's good to know what the technology is. Like, it's good that you know what it is. I'm very happy you allowed me on your show to give a breakdown of it, right? 
But if I were in your shoes as agents, I would know what it is. And then I would move on and get back down to basics because I don't think we're there yet, but we yeah. will be there soon. And if you really want to learn more about it, um, there's an amazing article by Harvard Business Review. It's called The Truth About Blockchain. You guys could just download the article. It won't cost you a lot of money, but it basically, it, it's, it, I, I love the, um, the authors are Marco Ian City and Karim Lakani uh, uh, okay. from Harvard Business Review. They talk about what blockchain and cryptocurrency is and how it's going to apply to our future. And it probably will be here in five to 10 years, but it's not here yet. And I would exercise uh, a, a, an extremely heightened level of caution before proceeding with the deal that included it right now. All right, we'll look that article up. And if it's something that uh, can be downloaded or shared, we'll share it. Otherwise, we'll share a link where you as the listener could you know, purchase it yourself. Uh, so we'll try to make it easy um, because you, you, you highly recommend that particular article. Yeah. So. It'll just break it down for everybody. But like I said, to all you listening agents out there, keep it in the back of your mind. Like, for example, as lawyers, there's all kinds of stuff we keep in the back of our mind, but it hasn't hit us yet. This thing is going to hit us, and when it hits us, it's going to be sweeping. Um, I don't think it'll necessarily change your value proposition as agents. Like, your value proposition will stay intact. Your biggest attack on your value proposition is the discounters, right? Mm -hmm. You guys are operating – you guys operate in a field. Um, you guys operate in a field where the discounters are going to continue to attack you, and you'll have to redefine your value prop. Historically, yeah. your value prop was, you know, access to the MLS, or, you know, I, I know how to value stuff. But you know, Redfin and Zillow came in, and they took those two value propositions away from you. And yep. your new value proposition is going to be like, you know, truly being a consultant and connecting to your client, right? Um, I think, right? And feel feel oh, free yeah, to disagree with me. No, no, that's that's absolutely one of uh, but, you know the things we talk about bringing value to the relationship. Otherwise, we're just a commodity. Correct. But as of right now, I don't think crypto or blockchain is going to disrupt your value proposition. You should know about it. Say, oh, that's cool, right? And it it is something that's really going to affect like us as a society over the next five to 10 years. But I don't anticipate that your value prop will change at all. You guys just continue to build value to your client and get out, have coffees and lunches. Yep. Yep. Face to face. Real estate's a face to face business. And as I like to tell agents all the time, shy real estate agents, Don, they have skinny kids. Shy real estate agents have skinny kids. You got to get out there face to face <laughs> business and uh, let people know what it is you you do for them and how you can solve their problems. So some really good information today. Uh, any, any last thoughts? No, hey, listen, I'd love to, anyone out there who'd like to build a relationship, you know, we're problem solvers and we're innovators. Uh, there's going to be some pretty big changes coming up in our industry. And, you know, we're looking for, we're calling out to those people who want to provide a, a broadened, deeper value proposition to their clients. We're reaching out to those type of people you know, to those people who are transactional, God, God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing. We don't want to disrupt you. We don't want to get in your way, but we're probably not the best fit for you. But if you're looking for a deep, broad and value proposition to offer to your clients, you know, we're the right law firm for that. We're, we're focused, you know, we do closings and we're amazing at doing closings, but that's not our core competency. Our core competency is developing uh, generational wealth for people. And there's no better way to do that than real estate and small businesses. So as part of our practice, we do closings, but we're really interested in people who are interested in creating generational wealth through land. And, and, and what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you, Don? Uh, you can go check out my videos, uh, www.chicagorealestateatty.com. If you go on my website, I provide a, a ton of educational videos on um, uh, investing in buying that land and doing tax, uh, tax strategies. You know, we connect 1231 to 1031 to 1014 and we show people how to connect those different, um, IRS revenue codes. Well, that's great. 
Good. Well, again, really appreciate your time, your expertise. Uh, as always, if you guys have any questions for me or for Don, uh, shoot me an email, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. Chances are if you have that question, others might have it. And, uh, again, check out our, our Facebook group. Check it out. It's free, Luxury Listing Specials. We provide fresh content on that Facebook group. And uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, let us know. And if you're serious about taking your business to the next level, you really should check out our brand-new website, LuxuryListingSpecials.com. Remember, our designation has zero sales requirement. Whether you are new to real estate or you're a rock star agent and you're just looking for the principle of slight edge, you're looking for a different angle, way to articulate something different, better than the competition, you ought to check out LuxuryListingSpecials.com. Most of the agents that take our designation do so with our Lux online course, but we do have our live courses throughout the country, and we're expanding internationally. We're, we're going to be in Mexico, and we got our book and our training manual uh, translated to Spanish. So we're excited about some exciting things in 2020. And as always, keep raising the bar in real estate. My name is Michael Lafito, and remember, it's not the market. It's the marketing. Take care, everybody.